All right, so far we've shown you the phase diagram for a system like water, which is a really simple system, right? Now, the actual phase diagram for water looks different than this cartoon example. Here's what it actually looks like. It's complicated, right? You've got all this blue region. Those represent the 11 different known solid phases of ice, right? Ice, or in other words, ice isn't ice. There's 11 different types of ice, meaning that the atoms that make up water molecule can then be put together in different ways. The water molecules themselves can be put together in different ways, which means the water molecules themselves can be put together in different ways to form different types of ice. Then you've got your green liquid region and your orangish vapor re region. Now, this is labeled out with a lot of accuracy. So how do you go about generating a, t uh, a phase diagram like this? I mean, do you experimentally try and observe these conditions? Um, it's challenging. You can experimentally confirm some aspects of a phase diagram. It's tough. But the majority of phase diagrams have a few points that have been experimentally measured, and most of it has been calculated. So how would you calculate a phase diagram? Well, it has to do with free energy, right? We know, since these represent phases at equilibrium, we're going to use Gibbs free energy because it tells us what phases will be in equilibrium by minimizing the Gibbs free energy. So first off, let's remember that G is equal to H, our enthalpy, minus T times S, our entropy. And we know that H enthalpy is equal to U plus PV. So our full expression for G would be U plus PV pl uh, minus TS. Now, if you look at these phase diagrams, there's things that are changing, right? As you go up and down in pressure, or as you go up and down in temperature, we can get different phases occurring, right? So what should be, if we were going to plot these things, imagine that we could plot these like this. We're going to plot free energy versus temperature, right? Or over here, we're going to plot free energy versus pressure, okay? What should be the slope at any given point of these things? Well, we can figure that out by looking at this expression here. And this expression here, if you take the derivative with respect to temperature, what do you get? That it's equal to negative s. If you take the derivative with respect to pressure, dgdp, then the slope should be equal to the positive volume. Right? Therefore, we know that in a G versus T plot, if we have three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, which one has the most entropy? Well, the entropy of a gas phase is going to be larger than the entropy of a liquid phase, which is going to be larger than the entropy of a solid phase. What about volume? What's the highest volume? It's going to be a gas, right, for a liquid or for water. The volume of a gas is going to be much larger than the other two. But which has a larger volume, solid or liquid? Most materials you'd go liquid next, but for water, it's actually solid. The volume of a solid is larger than a liquid in water. That's why ice floats. Its density is lower. It has a larger volume, so the volume of a liquid. Okay? So now we can go ahead and sketch these things. Now that we know the general trend, let's use three different colors. Right? So let's do um, this will be our gas color. This will be our liquid color. And then we'll do uh, this for our solid. Okay? So the entropy of a gas is the largest, so we need a steep line. The, sl the slope here is going to be the steepest, and it's negative, so let's do that for our, our gas phase, right? Then we've got our liquid phase, and then we're going to have our solid phase. Okay, if you see right there, I've drawn this in such a way that as you were to go up in temperature, let's say that you were increasing in temperature, the lowest free energy phase would be a solid in this region. That would be solid over that whole region, right? Because the purple line is the lowest. But then, over here, it would be a gas above this temperature, right? And at one point, all three of those phases are in equilibrium. So what I've just drawn right here is this transition, right? It was a pure solid over there, and then it goes to a gas. And there's one point where all three of those phases are in equilibrium. So I've just sketched the G versus T diagram for the triple point. Let's do it for the G versus P now, right? So we're going to use the same colors as before. The largest volume will be the gas, followed by that of a solid. So let's do purple for solid. And then we'll do it for our liquid. Okay? So same as before, there exists a single temperature where all three of those are in equilibrium. To the left of it, we're going to have or at lower pressures, we're going to have gas. 
and to the right of it we're going to have a uh, liquid. Okay, so let's test that. Over here at the triple point, sure enough, if you go up and down, so you're going from starting at low pressure up to high pressure, you're going to go from a gas to a liquid. Make sense? Let's do it for a different point. Okay, how about instead of those two points at the triple point, let's do a different one here. Okay, let's do it at this temperature. Could we sketch that for that temperature? We know that it needs to go from gas to solid to a liquid, right? It needs to go right down here. It needs to be a gas, and then it needs to be solid, and then it needs to be liquid. So let's go ahead and sketch that. This is going to be a G versus P. So G versus P. We said it's going to go from a gas to a solid to a liquid. OK? How would we make it work in this scenario? So let's start with the gas line. Let's draw the line. It needs to be the la largest slope because it has the highest volume. Okay. Now let's go ahead and draw that for our solid, which needs to be the next largest slope. Okay. And now let's draw it for our liquid. And you can see, check it out, from this pressure and higher, the lowest line is this liquid line. And in this intermediate pressure range, this purple line, our solid line, is the lowest line. And then at low pressures, this one right here is our lowest line. So that's why it goes from a gas to a solid to a liquid. Let's do one more, or a single pressure. We're going to do that temperature profile. Okay? It's going to go from a solid directly to a gas, and it's never going to be liquid. Okay? So there exists a temperature. All right, we're doing this. G versus temperature. It goes straight from a solid to a gas. So let's pull up our colors again. Gas looks like this. Okay. We said solid is the lowest line, the lowest slope. And then liquid, we have to draw it somewhere where it's never the lowest at any point, but it has to have the same slope constraints that we had before. So there it is. It's an intermediate slope. Right? It's not as steep as the blue, it's not as flat as the purple, but it's never the lowest, right? Therefore, this at this pressure, if you do the temperature sweep here, it goes directly from a solid to a gas, right? It went directly from a solid over here, and at that point it turns into a gas, and it's never liquid. So that's how you could get the idea of if you had a good expression for the Gibbs free energy as a function of you know, pressure, volume, temperature, entropy, you could start generating these diagrams and you could map out what's your lowest energy phase and that will tell you how to generate these phase diagrams which would otherwise be really complicated, especially considering that there's many different phases all competing for existence.